Hey, it's Kia the Pila Lamb. Thank you so much for joining me another Wednesday. I am two weeks from moving in and there's so much construction that still needs to be done. But I wanted to use this video to, to introduce how my process began and the loan that I used, which was 203K. So keep watching. This is the first property I've ever bought. So I can't speak on how other loans work and with respect to my experience with them because I've never used them. So what I will say is I bought this home in December of 2021. Um, prior to that, you know, it was a seller's market. I've been looking for a home over like a year. I tried to do other fixer upgrades with the 203K loan, but I was getting smoked and beat by cash offers, let's try it. So, by this time, it's been a year into the process, I was just like, kind of like, F it, let's go all in. All, like when I saw this property, I was like, let's go all in. So typically, when investors or real estate gurus get um, fixer uppers, they try to find properties that they can get for a low, low price, and then put a chunk of money into it, but for the low price they got it and the chunk of money that they put into it, they still have equity for what it's worth once it gets done being remodeled. So with me being like, oh, frick it, let's go all in, all chips on the table, I don't have that much equity. So I wanna like put that here just to kill that whole vibe. Like, that's my experience. Hopefully you find a fixer upper that you can have stupid equity in. I, I hope that for you, but that's just not my journey. Um, um, the, 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 the killer is for the 203k loan in my experience is finding a seller that is willing to wait for the escrow process. So cash buyers, right? They were able to start closing. They were closing deals in 10 days, right? No questions asked as is just give me the property. Boom, boom, boom. But for our, a two or three K loan, you have to either like how my realtor kind of did it was like position us to be like, we are worth the wait because you're getting like 20 more grand than the cash offer that's being on the table. You're, we're worth the wait because even though you have to wait maybe 45 days, you'll be getting this much more than these other buyers. So my realtor really sold like, she was the bomb with like just making us look like a bomb buyer. And um, so that I think was the like foot in the door because right, like why would a cash buyer, like why would a seller want to wait an extra 45 days for you to maybe go through, cause that still has the loan, right? It still has to be processed for like $5,000 more dollars. Like that, that's not worth 45 more days when they can go with a cash buyer for 5,000 less and everything's done in 10 days, right? And it's guaranteed. So yeah, my realtor did a really good job of selling us as the buyer. So after that, um, another thing to look out for is the fact that once you get a seller hooked, right? Um, you start the escrow process, you put your deposit in, and then you do your inspections, which I, even though you're getting fixed up and you know like things can be fixed up, I would definitely recommend getting inspections done, even though it costs money to do inspections, get it done. Um, Cause there was stuff that we found that we couldn't see, right? So like the sewer lateral from the front yard to the curb needed to be fixed, but you can't see that above ground. You know what I mean? And you, and if you don't have like multiple appliances running at the same time, you might not see the clog up. So the inspection was good, we caught that, but that's an extra to like eight grand, right? So I definitely get your inspections done. I know they cost money, but get them done because you can't see behind the walls. You know what I mean? So do your inspection and then you have to have a HUD inspector assigned to your project and he comes out or she comes out 
and they go through the property and they mark off anything that is like a health hazard. Um, so some of the things that were on mine is like windows need to be replaced. There was mold around it. Um, another thing that was called out was like termite, dry rot, um, some of the kitchen stuff. What else was on my thing that needs to be fixed? Um, like mold in the bathroom. So the HUD inspector will go through and he will literally mark off everything that's a health hazard and that, that needs to be fixed. So when you use your 203K loan, you can do the other stuff, but these items that he's marked have to be done on that loan. So that's on there. And so you get two appraisals. You get the appraisal for the as is value. And then you have to get from the HUD inspector all the things that need to be fixed. And then you need to pretty much I don't know how most people do it because you pretty much have to have a contractor at that point and go through like all this remodel stuff that you want to do, the renovations you want to do and get the cost of those renovations and then submit that to the appraiser so they can make an after repair value estimate. And that's like a blessing and a curse because you know, sometimes you might not know everything that you want at the time. And I was a newbie to construction, um, interior home design. And it's like a lot of stuff as the project was being constructed. I was like, oh, okay, we can move that over. Or, you know, actually, I think I want that. Or I want the electricity to be doing this over here. Or you might buy a fireplace, right? Like I bought an electric fireplace and the way that has to hook up is very specific. Um, and you can't really account for that because you don't have, well, I didn't flesh out all those details at the time of the loan being an escrow. So just put that out there. Um, then you get the after repair value. Then, um, you pretty much your 203k loan can't, um, exceed what it would be worth in the market after it's being repaired. Um, which is a blessing because that means you technically can't ever be under, I mean like, or over, like you can't be in the hole. You can break even, but you can't be in the hole. <laughs> um, and I know like most gurus don't like that, but. Okay, and then so once that happens, <sighs> then you get the appraisals back and then you do the final steps in the escrow and pretty much you negotiate between buyer and seller of like how much you want to come down, things like that. And then if you guys both agree, then you close. And that was pretty much my process with the 203K loan. It was very drawn out because my seller was out of state um, and older. I think my, I want to say my escrow took about three months because appraisers were backed up communication between the both parties. It was just a long process. Definitely taught me or stretched my my uh, patience, okay? Um, but I'm here. Nonetheless, seven months later, I'm here. But that is my experience with the 203K loan, getting it. Um, would I do it again? I for sure would do it again. Um, I, just, I just wish now being two weeks from being done with rehab, I just wish I had a clearer plan of the rehabbing and the remodeling. But yeah, and when I say a clearer plan, like to make sure that the remodel budget matched the vision that I would that I'm going for. Pretty much all the materials went up by the time we started construction, so. Uh, my loan doesn't really cover my rehab. Um, it covers most of it, but like I'm 10 grand over that I'll have to pay out of cash. Like I'll have to pay out of pocket. So yeah. 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 So that's my experience with actually getting the 203k loan. Um, you guys, if it sounds like something you could just check out or use, check it out. Use it. Again, the only, the biggest hurdles would be 
finding a seller that feels like your deal is worth the long escrow and um, getting all of the renovation numbers at the time of escrow so you can get your after repair value um, and close your loan because all of that has to be listed out in your loan. So those are my two biggest rise from that 203k loan process. All right, you guys, I will see you guys next Wednesday. Again, don't forget to follow me on TikTok or Instagram, which is linked in the description below. There you'll find daily renovation content. But until next Wednesday, and if you have any topics you want me to cover for my 203K loan process or my rehab process, comment it in the comments, and I will be sure to answer those in my next video or a future video.